Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. And today, we're doing the top 10 polyominal games of all time! Yeah! In polyominal November, but December. So every year what we do is we do a themed month where we dive into content and try to really understand the genre of games. Mm -hmm. I think this happened in our first year because uh, in order to do a top 10 video, we really wanted to Play get a really on. good grasp of yeah. a very specific genre of games mm -hmm. or a specific list of some sorts. So we did Roll and Rights in our first year. Yes. We did two player games in our second year. Mm -hmm. In our third year, we did Polyomino, Which is why we're here today to tell you the top 10 games that we think exist in a polyomino genre out of the 46 that we have played. 46. 46. Now, if you are curious for a full ranking, we did put out a Patreon video that has the entirety of our polyomino experiences ranked from the very last game to the very first. Mm -hmm. So if you're wanting a sneak peek, feel free to support us by checking out our Patreon page down in the links below. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that we'll do this is we're gonna start with 10. Of course we are, yes. We are, we each have our own lists. Yep. So we're gonna try to uh, negate cross <laughs> conversation as the games happen because there are some games on my list that are lower that will exist higher on Tyler's list and vice versa. Yeah, there are crossovers, so. But if we weigh in, you'll likely know that it is not a crossover. Uh, so maybe there's a sneak peek at that and that's fun. Uh, but other than that, we'll show you some fun pictures, we'll talk a little bit about the game, we'll say why it made it into our top 10, and why it's deserving to be one of the best polyomino games out there. Mm -hmm. And then, we'll end off by announcing all of our giveaway winners from this entire month, yes. yeah. which there's uh, quite a bit, yeah. so stay tuned for that. We might even do that in between um, 2 and 1. 2 and 1. That's, yeah. a, that's a good thing, to build up the hype for number 1. Exactly. Yeah. And it's only fair. It's only fair. Okay, well, without further ado, let's get started and get to it. Get to it. Okay, well, let's kick things off with number 10. Number 10. I'll start. My number 10 is... This baby. Planet Unknown. Now, Planet Unknown is from Adam's Apples Games, and it is a wonder. Now, the reason I like it so much is because of the simplicity and the simultaneous play of the game. Mm -hmm. Somebody picks a tile, everyone else gets a tile, and then you're all working to build up your planet, fill it with tiles, and make sure you score the most points through whatever means that the game provides you. Yes. Now, it's easy to play, it's easy to teach, and it is a complex game, but it doesn't feel like one, which I really, really like. I agree. Also, typically, I'm not a big space theme type of person, so I think that's why it took me so long to initially play this game. Ah. But once I played it, I'm hooked, and especially at a six player count, oh, if you're playing this game at six, this this is the game for six players. I think in my so. opinion. The simultaneous play is unreal. It's so fun whenever you spin it two, and every, like each direction has a person, mm -hmm. especially if you have a big round table. Mwah. Yeah, if you're playing at a circle table, this is fantastic. Great game. I mean, it's fantastic at a regular table, square table. Regular table is rectangle table in my head, apparently. Are regular tables square tables? I don't know. I thought they're <laughs> ovals. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that is Planet Unknown, and that is my number 10. My number 10 is... New York Zoo! Now, this one's from Capstone Games. It's public, or it's designed by Uwe. And of course, this game is just a joy to play. If you ever played Patchwork, I like to call this one like a uh, a zoo patchwork for more than two players. So <laughs> if you're interested in trying out something like that and you need more players for this, I would highly recommend New York Zoo. It's always fun to have like the different idea of like bringing in your animals and then basically releasing them into the wild, but then making sure that you're still like trying to fill your board. Uh, a lot of strategy behind it, but again, like Ilya said with Planet Unknown, the idea of it, the way that it flows is like very, very simple. And then the strategy really is in just the gameplay. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I would say about New York Zoo. My turn again, because we'll do this. My number nine is... Pop Art Rebuilding Seattle. 
Rebuilding Seattle is from WizKids and essentially what you're going to be doing is exactly that. This is like a historical um, meaning game. It's where it's like you are back in time when there's a giant fire in Seattle and you're helping to rebuild it through a lot of different various ways. You basically like own your little neighborhood and you build things up. But I like this game in particular for what's called the event cards. And you have an option to basically flip an event card or do something else on your turn. And I like the fine line between having to choose, having to make that decision, and then also like predicting what other people may do because it can help you in the long run or maybe you're feeling a little evil and you flip an event card over early because somebody else is going to be benefit extremely from it. There's always something like that that can happen. I think that this is a little heavy, more heavily involved than a lot of the other polyominoes that we've covered but it is a lot of fun. And if you're ready for that, like step up into a more strategic uh, heavyweight, heavy, a mid to heavyweight game, then I would suggest checking this one out. And that's Rebuilding Seattle. I really enjoyed Rebuilding Seattle. I think the population with the different categories, the how it flows together yeah. is super thematic and just very clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a, a minus track. You've got to make sure that you get your tokens back up past population because you want to be able to make everything work out. Sure. Okay. My number nine is the Magnificent. How oh, magnificent. So this is from Isla Svensson and Christian Al Oatsby and it is from Aporta Games. And I fell in love with this game the very first time that I played it. I think it honestly would even be higher on this list if it wasn't for the fact that it doesn't really scream polyomino to me. Yeah, it is I think like a when, sub. when making this list, I was really focused on the polyomino aspect. And there's still polyominoes in this game, and they're, they're a core component and a core aspect of this game. Mm -hmm. But it's not the primary thing, which is why it's a number nine and not higher, because <laughs> I do really like this game. Generally, you're a magician, you're traveling, you're putting on shows, you're gathering resources. But it's a very tight resource management game. Where in other games, the resource management feels like so tight, it's almost punishing. Here, you can still pull off moves, even if you maybe made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And everything that you do feels really good. You either get a lot of resources, you get to put on, put on a couple of shows based on the posters you have. You really, it feels really tactful and very precise. Yeah. Um, but it feels really good when things work out especially well. Yes. Um, and with the dice placement, with the way the polyominoes work, I just think it's a really clever game. It's a game I will definitely come back to many, many a times. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, overall, really, really enjoyed this game. Yeah, I think the dice drafting is actually my favorite part about it. It, to Ilya's point, is it it is to me like a the polyominoes is very much like a side mechanic to the mm -hmm. game, and uh, otherwise, it's really good. True, yeah. and that's the magnificent. Okay, well, let's jump into number eight. Number eight. For me, it is Michael Kiesling's Miyabi. Yay. This is from Habba Games. And I feel like this, to me, feels like a classic. I feel like this game is not talked nearly enough about. And it is fantastic. But the simple aspect of being able to place tiles where your lanterns are, where the symbol is... Yeah. And then trying to maximize points based on stacking up tiles on top. It's spatially really Puzzling. interesting <laughs> to think about because a lot of the time you're also covering points. So you're actually losing points uh, to get more points in the future. And it's just, it's very, it feels, it's very simple to play. It's very simple to teach. But the strategy in it does feel quite crunchy. And those, those advanced modules as well that you can add. Uh, and... It's generally a game that I'm happy to show to anybody, which is always a sign of a good game for me. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can show this to somebody who loves board games in and out, uh, and they lo they will love this game. I can show it to somebody who has not played a lot of board games, and they will love this game. Uh, and generally, the theme is really fun. Mm -hmm. It feels really good. I would love to see more Miyabi out there. Yeah. I will say, I think, to me... Well, first of all, it's funny you say it's a classic, because... Um, I feel like a classic is more like well-known. Um, That's what I mean. It should and, be well-known. No, but my point is that I think it's an underrated game. I think more people should try this one out. There's a lot going for it. I think maybe because it's a Haba game that it gets like stuck in this like kid space, mm -hmm. which there's nothing wrong with it. Like Haba games does kid games. That's the thing. But mm -hmm. I think, And strategy games. Yeah, but I think Mayabi <laughs> is like 
a level above that. Yes. And um, I don't, but I don't necessarily know if that association is there. So sure. yeah, I think it's an underrated polyomino, that's for sure. You're right, underrated is a better way because I said it should be a class. I didn't say it yeah, was. It should be a class. But it should be, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. That's my hobby. My number eight. Hello, we're number seven. We're still number eight. Cartographers! This one is the big box, of course. I think we've said it in our review, but this is like, it's got a bunch of paper in it, a bunch of new crayons, or pencil crayons. They're but, new! Uh, this game is a flip and write polyomino where you are just like drawing these Tetris shapes that come up. I love the scoring in this. I think mm -hmm. having four different scoring methods, but only ever scoring two every round is a lot of fun. You can kind of like plan towards certain goals to optimize your scoring. And then you often have to decide like which one is gonna score you the most points in the long run because you can really commit to one of them and make the mistake of committing to the wrong one and not actually scoring a whole lot of points. Had you spent more time on a different card, then maybe you would have been in a different situation. But I like that tug and pull. And of course, once you play this game, you start to uh, learn like which goals are really high scoring that are easy to do. And I think on top of all of that, having the uh, villains I get, or the monsters that you encounter where you basically have to pass your sheet to the next player and they can kind of mess you up in a sense is a lot of fun. Not to mention, I'm not even, I'm not going to talk about them too much, but there are like expansions that add different elements to mm -hmm. it, like heroes, different maps and stuff like that. And it's just been a joy to play. Plays really quickly and it really is just paper and cards. So Yeah, this is an extremely well designed game. I think, I don't know anybody, I do know one person who's just terribly bad at this game every time we play and we always joke about it. But he still likes it. He still liked his experience. And everyone we've shown this game has really, really enjoyed it. And another should be a class. I think Cartographers is a classic. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is. But it How is. How do we know? Is it number a number eight on my top 10 polyominoes? That's for sure. Amazing. And what is number seven on your top 10 my polyominoes? Number seven. My number seven is a Phil Walker Harding game. Called Llama Land. Llama Land. Llama Land. It, I mean, right off the bat, you see the name and you're like, ooh, pinatas. At least that's what I do. And then, then you actually realize that when you start playing this game, you're collecting llamas. And you're basically trying to own the best llama land. And the fun part about this is actually the first few rounds when you are placing on the goals. I think it's cool to have that as like an optional action to do where you could really like inform your strategy moving forward. Mm -hmm. But you also have the option to later switch that if it's not working out well for you. But also you end up just losing the potential to score a lot of points because somebody else probably claimed like the top spot in those spaces already. I think that this game is a lot of fun to play. You really are just like drafting a tile and placing it like properly so you can get a bunch of different resource and you're trying to race for the llamas to get the most points. And that's as simple, really as simple as it gets. I feel like Phil Walker Harding really perfected that mechanism of cover things up to get things. To get things yeah. And I feel like it's really prominent in his polyomino games. And this one is just so much fun because sometimes you, you if you line everything up correctly and you place that perfect tile, that mm -hmm. you, pretty much every space gets you something, it feels so good. Yeah. And with like the workers that you end up getting, like the cards, you can build yourself like a little bit of an engine too. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of fun to be able to like manipulate your resources so you're able to grab the next mm -hmm. thing that you want. Because sometimes you do end up being short. But thankfully, as you play through the game, your engine grows if you choose to go that direction. And it feels quite fantastic. It's a really fun set collection. That's Llama Land. So my number seven is the one I awkwardly stayed quiet for. <laughs> <laughs> Which is New York Zoo. Uh, maybe I will not continue to stay quiet. I was like peeking over to Ilya. At the and I was just like, and I was like, he's, he's going to chime in. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I wanted to save all of my delicious thoughts for my number seven discussion. Oh. Because I like this game more than you. That's true. You do. Um, so... This game, everything to Tyler said, I 100% agree with. The, the things I will add is this truly feels like one of the most well-designed games. It has it absolutely all. 
and I feel like it would be higher on my list if it was not for a little bit confusion of how the animals work with the movements the of them? and the breeding yeah, and just fair. a little bit. I feel like it always like takes me an extra like brain step to like for it to click. And I feel like it never like fully clicks. I always have to refer to the player aid or the rule book because mm -hmm. uh, it is a little bit not so not overtly intuitive. intuitive. No. Uh, but other than that, everything in this game I love. Mm -hmm. The the clever decision making of how to move the elephant, the almost hay drafting of like, hey, if I move the elephant, Tyler's going to get his perfect towel. So I have to move <laughs> the elephant only once. Um, and it scales really well with different player counts. Yeah. Two players is fantastic because the board is just bigger, but at more players, the board is smaller. And the whole aspect of it, teaching players and saying, the way to win is to fill your board. Yeah. You just get tiles and then this is how you get the attractions. That's it. Uh, you learn through the intricacy. You learn how to play. People love this game. Yeah. I love this game. I'm always excited to play it. And I also will say, I think it's one of the most aesthetically pleasing games in the polyomino world. It is. I really like the choices of animals. Although I call the meerkat an otter all the time, mm -hmm. just because I love otters. He does. Yeah. And that's New York Zoo, baby. Okay, time for number six. We're getting pretty close to the top five territory. Woo! So my number six is... Llama Land. Oh, it's crossovers, back. crossovers, left, right, and center. Um, the only thing I'll add that I haven't said when we discussed it with Tyler's was that um, it's also another one of the games that's just so easy to introduce to people. Yeah, yes. There's not the rule set isn't overtly heavy, but it has those heavy aspects of potentially engine building with your characters if you want, mm -hmm. uh, planning and scoping and trying to figure out the best strategy. But it also is so cool of where you place your llamas. Because they're there forever. Yeah. And they could restrict your movement in a really negative way. And it actually is very cool when it does because it's a learning moment. And then you come That's back right. and you start revising strategy and you start being like, I can't make that mistake again. And I feel like almost every game someone does place an incorrect llama and then they're like, no. Yeah. And everyone's just like, llama, llama, llama. It's apparently very culty when we play games. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> But overall, it's such a joy of a treat of a game. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's my number six. Number six. All right. My number six is... The simple yet very fun junk drawer. I don't know what it is about this game that just like absolutely popped for me. But when we played this, actually both of us looked at each other and like, this will probably be on our top ten. And then we played it a couple more times and I was extremely convinced. I was like, yes, Ilya, this is going to be on my top 10. I know it, I know it, and I know it. And it's Lo even in your behold, mid top 10. Yeah, it didn't just get to top 10. It is number six. Mm -hmm. And basically in this game, you've got four different drawers and a bunch of tiles that everybody like sh doesn't share, but you have the identical tiles as every player. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be flipping over uh, you'll place out four cards face down, you'll flip over the first one, and then everybody has to place that into one of their four drawers based on the scoring conditions that have been laid out at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. And those conditions can be like really whatever. It really does shape your game, but it is fun to have to place those tiles. And then once you've placed it, that like shelf is locked out for the round where all the rest of the cards face down cards are flipped back up or flipped up as you play. Mm -hmm. And it's a fun little puzzle. You're never going to be able to place all of your pieces. That would be extremely impressive. Um, and you don't want to. And you, yeah, you end up, well, it depends, I guess, what the scores are. So you kind of want to like be mindful of where you're playing them. Something can go wrong. A tile can come up. But the fun thing about this is not only is it simultaneous play, it is one of those games where everybody is in the same boat you are doing the exact same thing as everybody, you're placing the same tile, the only difference is how you decide to do it. And I think that's always very interesting because, um, like I said, is at the very beginning of the game, you start off all the same. So those key decisions really do make the game a different um, for each of you every single time, and it's fun to watch unfold. It also scales infinitely, so you can have 100 people play this game at the same time. That's true. With the concept of that is very cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm shooketh, spoilers, it did not make my top 10, but I'm shooketh that it did not because mm. I was so convinced that it would. Uh, there's so much love I have for this game. I think the other thing, only a quick thing I'll add is 
the fact that it almost breaks your brain from stereo, like the typical polynomials, because you're always placing your tiles in different ways. Sometimes you want them to touch. Sometimes you want to create certain yes. pockets of spaces. Yes. And it like really tricks your brain because you're so used. Like I'm very used to polyominoes connecting, like telling the shape, where you want to the lines. So this kind of breaks that apart, but in such a friendly and quick way that it's just almost a really fun game to just play right off the bat before you start off your game night. Yep. And then move on to something else. And the theme, of course, is top notch. Very fun. Yeah. So that's junk drawer. All right, we are halfway there, and now we're on to number five. Mine is a repeat, and it is right here. Oh, it's Planet Unknown. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Basically everything that Ilya said. <laughs> um, my favorite thing is the simultaneous play and the scaling to six players. I think it is so fun um, to have like those chain reactions that happen during your game when you do end up placing a tile, you end up going up in one track. That triggers you going up in another track and then you get to move your rover and then yada, yada, yada. Like it just carries on and I think that's a lot of fun. The nice thing about this too is that there are goals, but you're always competing against the person to your right and the left. And I think that's a lot of fun. Of course, you're racing up those tracks to get the most points and then filling up your board. But at the end of the day, it's always interesting to pick the tile that you need and then look over at or around the table and be like, uh, see people's reaction, be like, no, I don't even, I can't even, what am I supposed to do with this? And uh, it's like a it's like a take that but unintentionally right and I or think that, sometimes well I mean you have to specific that would be I hope not intentionally in this game at least but <laughs> because there's there's that element you never have to feel like very bad about like giving somebody the wrong tile because mm -hmm. you're always really just choosing for yourself True. Um, because I think that's probably the best way to get yourself more points mm -hmm. yeah that's planet unknown I think Ilya covered a lot of why we like this game and it really is, it really does come down to six player simultaneous play with ease of teach and still crunchy strategy. So many crossovers. Yeah, planet unknown. But a lot of non crossovers as well. A lot of non crossovers as well, yes. Let's see if my number five will be a crossover. It is Baron Park. So this is again from Phil Walker Harding and Lookout Games. And I like it more than Llama Land. You like it more than Llama Land. Because it is a direct comparison. <laughs> now, there is something about this game that I just deeply love. I feel like this is a game I can play again and again and again and again. And I think the more that you play, you really do figure out some of the strategies. But because of that variation of how the boards come out, it's always slightly tinkered a bit. Yes. Oh yeah. um, but and also with the expansions with the additional con with the expansion and yeah. the additional content there's just so much that you can explore and love in this game mm -hmm. uh the fact that you're building bear parks the fact when the tiles when everything makes sense and feel, fits so well it's just so fun to play yes. uh it's a, again it fills that whole category of like you can really show this to anybody you can pick this game up pretty quickly but the strategy in it and the way that you play it is just a tremendous amount of fun mm -hmm. um I adore Brand Park. That's all I have to say for my number five. Yeah, I think the scaling in this game is great. I think you can play it, and it is very satisfying because you are trying to just fill your um, you fill your uh, space up. Mm -hmm. Like you end up getting four tiles all the time that you're putting different polyominoes on top of, and at the end of the day, maybe filling them the fastest is the way to guarantee yourself the win. But mm -hmm. sometimes it even isn't. So it's not about the race, but it does feel very, very good to fill up your whole entire board and maybe even like race for some of the goals and statues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tyler, what is your number four? My number four is Baron Park. <laughs> I guess we could just skip past your four. No, this doesn't make sense. My number four is Baron Park. Mm -hmm. And like we've just been saying is like, this game is really fantastic. Uh, I love the scaling in it. I love the like puzzle of trying to figure it out, but I also really like it because once we, when we started playing this more and more, I started paying more attention to like what other players were doing, not necessarily in a like, oh, I'm gonna try and like take the tile that they might need, but in a way that was like, oh, so-and-so over there is taking these tiles and they're really working towards that goal. I was already working towards that goal. How can I ensure that I get it to them, get, get to that goal before they do? And then it also, then it becomes like a, a race within a race because now you've got information uh, from every player that you're playing with 
but you can really like cater your strategy to exactly what's going on and make those key decision points of like, what do I need to do and how do I need to do it to get the most points? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Barren Park. Barren Park, just a heaps of joy. <laughs> Hitting it out of the Barren Park. Okay. Well, my number four is a newer one. A newer one. Tipper. It's from Lookout. It is again from Lookout Games. <laughs> I think what we can learn is that Lookout makes very good polyomino games. There we go. Now, Tipper caught me by surprise. I did not think I would like it as much as I do, but I think the gimmick of the spin the wheel to see what tiles you get got me. It's also not super punishing in a way where you have to take what you get. You still have a choice within yeah, that choice. Yep. Yep. Uh, and it's just silly. And it's fun. And it has all the other elements that I really like. There's multiple ways to get points. You can really prioritize one of the ways. You can really focus on sheep. Or you can focus on adaptability based on what the tiles you get mm -hmm. and the choices that you have. But there's a lot of really clever aspects in it. It also just feels really good to play. Uh, I also really like the cover. Maybe I'm just a sucker for good covers. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but Tipperary is a hit, and I would highly recommend it. Yeah. I was really surprised that this was on your top 10. Yeah, I mean, I don't want that to come off as, like, bad, but, like, I I, I do enjoy... Uh, usually mine and Ilya's lists kind of align in some manner, mm -hmm. um, and we've got, like, very close uh, scoring when it comes to these. Mm -hmm. Tipiary, I think, was, like, very far off, um, like where Ilya's was versus where mine was in our ranking was like, I think that took me by surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you say, hate about Tipper? No, that's the thing. It's not to say that I don't like this game is that I think actually the randomness of the spin is uh, what bothers me. The turn. Um, yeah. yeah. That's that being said, it does add a different element that you don't see in uh, polyominoes and I can see the appeal. Uh, I do really enjoy this game. Obviously, it was just like there was just other games that I enjoyed more. I like how it became a de you defend yourself. I need to say <laughs> why. why? Yeah. 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 But that is Tipperary, and it is uh, designed by Gunter Birkenhardt, mm -hmm. which is also not Uwe Rosenberg, too, because there's true. a lot of well, Uwe Phil Rosenberg Walker and Phil Walker yeah. Harding in these lists. Yeah. Yeah. So that's always fun, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my top three now. Top it's getting three. to the wire. This is the bronze metal game. This is. Bronze, silver, and gold. Yeah, it's always a silver medal game, though. What? Isn't it always? Oh, no, it's a bronze medal game. And you... Yeah, you're right. Well, this game has won the bronze. bronze. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a bronze medal game. I was like, we're not. Com nothing's competing. <laughs> it's already competed. All it's right. won. There we go. This is also a newer one, and it is... By new, you mean, like, brand new. <laughs> sea Dragons. Or a Dragones Del Mar. Dragones Del Mar. Now, this one was tough for me because I don't think this game is technically out in North America. Which was very hard for me to put on this list because we often don't put games on like top 10 lists or overall best lists unless they're out and accessible. Okay. Um, but I just could not. Like, this game has won my heart from the day that we played it. I think my expectations in it coming in was... That would be a fun game. I really like the theming of it. But the tw the twist that your dragons cannot touch, mm -hmm. the way that the boards the randomly position and the grid is set up, the way that you affect the other players by covering whirlpools for the score points for them potentially or giving them coins if you're touching their dragons. Mm -hmm. There is so much in this game that just feels incredibly innovative and different than a lot of the other games. Like, I think this is the one that feels the most different in the polyomino section. And it's funny because a lot of these games, I really was focusing on the polyomino shape and, like, physical aspect. Mm -hmm. And this one doesn't actually have a physical polyomino you shape. You play cards. You play cards to make the polyomino shape. But it somehow still made it in my top three, and I am here for it. Yeah. Um, I genuinely have no complaints about this game. It's definitely becoming a favorite in general as well. Uh, the art, the way it's played, the player interaction, the pace of the game, the mm -hmm. how long the game takes. It's mwah. It's a lot of fun. It was almost in my top 10. I'll it was almost that. in your top um, 10. It, it's like the area majority thing is a lot of fun. And then the fact that you can like affect the a specific area, like mm -hmm. north, south, east, or west, like whichever area you can, you can cover up those whirlpools and really like mess with the scoring that could go on even if you aren't winning. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, you don't want to mess them up if you're winning, but 
they've got those like contract cards, the um, coral cards, which, which can really put a spin in the game. Like mm -hmm. you end up being able to complete a contract way earlier than you wanted to. You also end up being able to like add an add like plus one to your uh, area um, majority. Swings. And that can, yeah, that can be a swing. And it, is really important to um, score your area majorities, slow people down from getting their area majorities, and also still completing your contracts. So it's like bouncing back and forth between doing all of these things uh, and finding that like perfect perfect balance. And the table presence, oh, it is fun, so good. Mm -hmm. That is Dragones Del Mar or Sea Dragons. All right, my third. My bronze medal game goes to da, 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 da. my city roll and build. I feel like this game is unbelievable. It's so much in this small box that I like, I think we started playing it and then we just didn't stop playing it until we were basically done all mm -hmm. 12 chapters, 12 chapters. Yeah. Episodes. Episodes. Four, right, chapters. four chapters. Yeah. Um, the dice. I think is so creative in this game the the way that you stick them together to make the polyomino shape that you're going to be drawing on the board I love I thought that was so fantastic I think the other die having like that building type on it is very interesting and makes for some really key decisions that you can't necessarily plan for but you also can if that makes any sense and it's just been great to play through the campaign watch it get like different as you go through those levels and then um be able to replay it again because it is in such a small box and they give you a bunch of paper it's just like this game seems kind of endless and i really appreciate it for that it is so good it's so good i was also shook if that this one did not make my top 10 because i was yeah. fairly confident it would uh but i think when i was comparing and it just didn't again the whole polyomino aspect didn't fully translate because mm -hmm. you have to make the polyominoes with the dice. And I think that was like in my head of one more layer too d deep. But I will say this is very likely going to be on my top 10 of 2023 list because Ooh. of how much I love this game. Yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy that we were able to get a copy of it and or as early as we did and play through it. Because like, like I said, we didn't, we kind of just didn't stop until we made it through the campaign at least once so with how much game is in it for the price point definitely mm -hmm. recommend checking yeah. out my city i love how portable it is and everything it's just like this compact um well obviously compact roll and build implementation of my city so good yeah. there we go my three and your two my two was actually one that we didn't play we intentionally, or no, not intentionally, but didn't get to play until we knew for sure we were going to be doing Polyomino Month. And that one is a reprint from WizKids called The Princes of Florence. Now, this is was one of the games that a lot of folks, when we asked if we were gonna do Polyomino Month, what game should we cover? A lot of people had mentioned this game. And we were so excited when we saw that WizKids was redoing it we hopped on the opportunity to get it and boy oh boy do i love this game the polyomino aspect of the game is definitely there like you're building your little um what is it called um they've got a special word for it uh but it's like your principality principality yeah i remember um, it, and basically like you're building up on your board you're hiring different uh, workers and then you can like eventually throughout the rounds you can end up like grabbing other players workers and then placing them back down and then scoring a bunch of points it, this game starts off very like slow i would say and then as you move forward it grows and grows and grows which is great for the complexity of the game uh, it because it increases so and it eases you into it it's great for like that engine buildy feel and then of course like you feel start gaining a lot more points at the end and that's where you can really start to like see those combos like come back and forth on you and just be able to score like a lot of points mm -hmm. i play we played this and then i immediately was like we're playing this again and then i was immediately like who can we show this to because i want to play it again mm -hmm. so if that doesn't uh tell you enough it being my number two game should also 
um, just speak volumes to how I feel about this game. If you haven't, definitely try it out. It is a time commit, but once you get there, uh, the iconography, the art, everything kind of just like eases you again into the game as you progress, and I really appreciated it. I really enjoyed this game as well. It was inches away from my top 10 list. But what I will say that I don't know if you fully mentioned is the two phases in this game. Uh, how yes. you're, there's an auction phase for what you want, and then there's a building phase. Mm -hmm. And what you want and what you get can really influence what you're going to build and the workers that you have as well. So that whole aspect of it is so interesting. And because money is hidden, there's a layer of the game where it becomes a little bit difficult. Especially at two-player, it's so much fun to play because you yeah, almost yeah, bid awesome. just to bid. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then, like, you bid and then you're like, I don't want it. <laughs> and then you kind of, like, screw the other person over because you, you always try to, like, inch up the funding a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at all player counts, it's been a ton of fun. And I agree. I feel the same way about this game. I really, really enjoy mm -hmm. it. Well, maybe not as much as you because yours is a two, but... Yeah. Still very enjoyable experience for me too. Yes, this game. Okay, so my number two, the silver medal game. The silver is medal game. A feast for Odin. Hooray! Now this is uh Z-Man Games Uwe Rosenberg game. And it is a heavy, heavy crunchy game. There is a lot of stuff that happens in this game. There's 12 different phases. There's so many actions where you can place workers. Yeah. But essentially, through this worker placement, tile placement, exploration, build up a little bit of a community type of game, uh, it's always such a joy at the table. Mm -hmm. I remember it took us a little bit to get to the table for the very first time. Well, and when we set big. it up, every square inch of the table was covered with this game there is something for everything yeah. uh, and then we played it and we were in awe and we were so excited to play it again and again and see all the different strategies we still haven't been able to find the expansion to this game Correct. which i hear is incredible so we're still on the lookout for that but even with this game alone it is one of the best polyomino games it's also one of the best, I think, games in general. Like, yeah. There's just so much to love about this game. It's such a brilliant mix of mechanics. And I think like, like, Cavern, like Cavern and Agricola come to mind when I think about this game as well. But this game feels so different than them. Yeah, and I can't quite... Yeah. And it, it gives you... I feel like Cavern and Agricola it feels like almost like you're always like, Ugh, what, what can I do to like mitigate damage? Where this one just feels like you're building up an empire. Mm -hmm. uh, and it feels like you're building up and it feels so good playing it. And the fact that different amount of workers can go in different spaces and prioritizing and taking off spaces from other players is just... I can go on and on and on, but I will just say it is a phenomenal polyomino game. And yes. I would recommend it to anybody who is willing to take the plunge into more complex board games. Yeah, this game is heavy. It is also amazing. And um, yeah, that's really all I can say right now. Well, now let's jump into the gold medal, the number one, the best polyomino game that we think is. Yes. That, our number ones. And you'll notice something, A Feast for Odin, has not moved. And that is because my number one game, my number one polyomino, is A Feast for Odin. Everything that Ilya said is right. Uh, he nailed it, really. The, the fact that you start off basically with this, like, negative score, and you need to, like, work your way towards basically covering your whole board, it's really intricate. You've got a lot of these decisions that you have to make with these workers and then as the rounds progress you're going to get more workers that will let you like divvy up the actions but the fact that some actions take one worker um, and all the way up to some actions taking four workers it is this like tight management of worker placements while also like still remembering that you need to feed your people you need to make sure you're getting stuff to fill your board that actually like you know um surround some of those key components because that adds like a little bit of like what i would call well i guess resource generation is the best way to put it and then at the same time as you play through this game you learn kind of like the layers of this game and you learn that like maybe sometimes you don't need to like cover all of this stuff right away and you can like explore a different area to make your uh resource generation more stronger however it is you want to go there's like 
a lot of interesting lines that you can take in this game and I think that the heavy combination of worker placement and then polyominoes and really mapping out like what would work here, how can I build from like the bottom corner all the way up and what do I need to do to get there while also maintaining this like well your village essentially so I think like this game hits all the dots for me. I'm very happy that we learned how to play this like early on in our like hobby of board gaming hobby because era. because now I'm I'm excited to play it whenever I get the opportunity. It is heavy and it's crunchy, it's strategy and that is like right down my aisle. So, I'm I'm not surprised at all with where this stands on my list of polyomino games. I figured that this would be uh, a top contender at least and clearly it has done more than that because it is my number one it's such a good one i can't wait for the deluxified hefty sprouting experience it's already pretty pretty hefty yeah it'd be, uh, the box would be like the size of a table mm -hmm. can't even imagine because mm -hmm. it's, it's packed in there and it's heavy it really really literally is. Yeah. yeah okay anyways that's my number one let's move on to Ilias. So my number one game, best polyomino game that I think is My City. Hey. So this is why I was surprised My City Rome Build didn't make it because mm -hmm. I adore this game so much. Now this is a legacy game. The board does get covered with stickers. The game progresses and you can't really reset it. Uh, although there is an evergreen mode. Mm -hmm. But the reason I love this game so much is simply due to the sheer fact that once we played it, we had to finish it. And I think with legacy games, that is a rare occurrence for us, especially at this stage in the hobby. Like there we, a time commitment. There are time commitments. We have to really like a game. And to be honest, if I was given the opportunity to play this game one more time from start to finish, I would jump on it in a heartbeat. The premise of the game is so simple. You flip a card, you place a tile. But as the scoring changes, as a game evolves, as a story, even though thin kind of trickles in, you just have so much fun placing those polyomino pieces and trying to make them work. Mm -hmm. um, I think in essence, when I think of an amazing polyomino game, this one always comes to mind because polyominoes are the core mechanic because it's something that really drives this game forward. And it's a constant that remains with the game, uh, even though the game is changing. Mm -hmm. Um, and the fact that you have a board that just becomes your own, you get to color in those pieces, you get to sticker everything, and by the end of it, you have a captured journey. You have your captured score, you see how well you've done, maybe you have a grand catch up where you were losing the first half of the game and all Very of a sudden possible. you caught up and you succeed and triumph. Um, and there's also the evergreen mode. The game in itself is also really fun. It doesn't need necessarily the legacy element, but the legacy element definitely sends it over the top for me. Now, if this interests you, I would recommend the roll and build first to see if you like that type of genre because of the price point, because of how accessible it is. But this game will always have a really, really special place in my heart because of how fast it plays, because of how fun it is, and because of the memories we were able to build with this game. Yes, my city is fantastic. I think like to pit it against the roll and build is like this one, you have all of your cities or your buildings and you know that they're in the deck. Mm -hmm. With roll and build, it's a little more random and you can, um, like I would argue that it has a little bit more of a luck element mm -hmm. to it than um, this one does because you can kind of like logic puzzle your way through mm -hmm. what the possible outcomes are based on the buildings that you have left. And I think that is a very interesting twist. Well, I don't want to say twist to the game, but it adds something else that the roll and build didn't have. And because this is the original game, it definitely does have like um, a special spot in my heart, but it just, um, when I put them the two together, roll and build was higher for me, I suppose. <laughs> Why are you coming at me at my number one? <laughs> no, I think it's a fantastic game. <laughs> no, I I'm do. kidding, I'm I kidding. It's great. No, I think the, the other thing too is I do think, um, this one just feels more well-rounded to me because there's much more content in this one. There's much more story in this one. And there's a tactile feel, which I also really like in games is having a tactile feel. But generally, this is my number one. I'm very happy. And that is the end of Polyom November. Well, what about all of our giveaways? Well, we were getting, we were going to do that in between two and one, but we got too excited. Yeah, it's because your two was Feast. And then my one was feast, so, so just we had felt to continue right to keep it there. 
Well, let us get to do the giveaways. Okay, we are ready to give away the many a games that we are about to give away. We are, we are. We now, just first want to pause and say thank you so much to all the companies that have um, decided to partner with us in doing these giveaways. We really, really appreciate it. And we're really excited to be able to give these games or get these games in front of uh, some of the people that have watched our videos. And we want to say thank you to each and every one of you for watching our videos, for going along with our ridiculous riddles or <laughs> questions, questions yeah. and just having fun in the comments. Your comments mm -hmm. generally mean the world to Genuinely, not generally. <laughs> mean the world. They generally mean the world. <laughs> <laughs> they genuinely mean the world to us. And we just really appreciate you for taking the time to check out our channel, to check out the stuff that we're doing for jo joining in the conversation, having a lot of fun. Uh, and of course, thank you to all our Patreon subscribers who yes. make it possible to help us get progress along our board game journey. And just as a reminder, if the, our entire ranked list is on Patreon, if you want to check that out mm -hmm. and support us down below. Yes. Now before, now, oh my goodness words. Let's give away some games. Let's give away some games. So because we filmed this earlier, we have not done the draw yet. So we will announce the game and then you'll see the comment of the player that has won. And we will celebrate them together with enthusiasm. Yes, we will, as we always do in giveaways, comment on your comment. Well, we'll reach out to you in some manner of fashion mm -hmm. if you have been so lucky to win one of the games. Uh, so you can expect that. And we'll only reach out to you through YouTube or email, and our email will be listed in the comment that reach out to you. So if there's any other ways that people reach out to you, it's not real. It's, a scam. it's fake news. It's yeah. a scam. Be careful around those. Yeah. Uh, we also have a couple surprises. We're actually giving away a few more games mm -hmm. than we have anticipated. Yes. So there'll be some duplicate winners, which is very exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's kick it off. Our first winner is Prehistories. Times two. Times two, yes. So, so only two names on the board. So they are... This one. And... That one. Congratulations <laughs> to our prehistory winners. Woo! Next up is the deluxe version of Planet Unknown. Holy moly. Who won, Tyler? I don't know, but their name is right here. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, we have our giveaway of In the Hall of the Mountain King, and this one as well is a duplicate. Duplicate. <gasps> two. So we'll be giving away two copies of this one. I wonder to who? Maybe this person? And this person. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most ridiculous giveaway we've ever. I actually like it because it will get people to like watch and notice that their name is up there because we don't want to. We want to make sure that it gets into the right people's hands. We'll get it in your hands. Now the next giveaway is for Isle of Cats Retail Edition and the winner for that one is and the winner for the Race to the Raft Retail Edition is congratulations kitty cats <laughs> because they're cat games. I like it. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Now Tyler's surprising top 10 hit Junk Drawer. I'm not surprised by this at all. What I am surprised at is we're giving two copies of this one away and the winners are here. I tried to think of a jug pun and it didn't come to me. Jeez. I threw it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now for New York Zoo, for our wonderful playthrough giveaway, we have... And then we of course did team three, green and pink. Are mm -hmm. they going to the same person? No. One to one and one to another. So one This two. person and this person. Congratulations. Now we have my city, my number one game of all time. We have two of them actually. And they're going to this person and this person. And last but not least, we have my city roll and build, mm -hmm. which Tyler thinks is superior mm -hmm. to my city. I mean, maybe it was my number three for a reason. And we're giving away two copies of that one as well to... And that's our giveaways! Congratulations to all of our winners. We will be in touch to get you those games. You will get those games. We'll leave your comment, like Tyler said, on your comment, and we will go from there. Mm -hmm. Other than that, for our question of the day today, 
What is your favorite polyomino game? Yes. If we asked before and you've told us already, tell us again. Tell us again. And you can only pick one. Yeah, you can. If we made a top 10 and pick number one, you have to as well. That's true. That is true. But if you can't pick, you can pick two. Yeah. Just let us know some of your favorite polyominoes down in the comments below and we'll be sure to respond. Now, as our secondary seeker question of the day, Ooh. what theme should we do next year? Oh, we've done roll and rates, two player games and polyominoes. Mm -hmm. Is it time we do a pivot to yeah. something else? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a mechanic. Maybe it's an overarching theme. Games with the Maybe most it's... eyeballs. Yes, who knows? But patchwork for us to figure out in the future. Until next time, though, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and join this lovely community that we've built so far. And otherwise, hit that thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.